and welcome back to Andres Are, where today we'll be watching The Haunting of Bly Manor, episode 8, titled The Romance of Certain Old Clothes. I have no idea what that means, but it sounds dirty. But on the last episode, it was really, really good. It begins with Flora and Miles having a dispute about um, Danny after Miles knocked her out. They tied her up and Danny wakes up crying and trying to free herself. We see where Peter's problems may have started in life, and it's no surprise that it stems from his parents, a character that is possessive and money-hungry, as his mother is the same way. And she's a really good character. Um, she kept coming up in that last episode. Rebecca and Hannah talking to the police officer about Peter. Apparently, he stole it from the house. Rebecca states that she has no alarms and didn't know where Peter got the money from. When Rebecca gets impatient, she hops again and Miles tells her he cannot sleep. He says Peter did not run and brings up the monster that took him. And Rebecca is still, you know, lost in the sauce, but she's starting to get a little hints. The narrator explains how Peter left Rebecca at the boundary at Bly, a boundary impossible to cross together. A week later, Peter returns. He has a plan that will help them be together forever and will allow them to touch each other again. How romantic. No, it's not. Wait until we get there. She needs to accept it fully that they are becoming us. Peter promises that they will share everything equally together. Rebecca fully embraces Peter. She touches him and she touches him. They hop back to when Rebecca wore the fur coat. She asks if she's tucked away again. And Peter confirms that they are together. But it turns out the narrator is following a journey where Peter has acted selfishly. His fascination to being able to be near Rebecca has given him an alternative motive. It's really early. I'm actually a really good reader. I just cannot read my notes in the morning. That changes everything forever. Rebecca walks slowly into the lake late at night and goes underwater. She sees a dead body in the water and her but in, in her bed, she wakes up and sees water above her. In the lake, Rebecca drowns. Rebecca sobs at her own dead body next to the lake. Flora is on the other side watching. Jamie sees the dead body and carries Flora away. This whole time I was really confused because I was like, Dear Rebecca, comma, why didn't you think that Peter was going to kill you? Like, how else do you think that a ghost is going to want to be with you forever and you guys will be able to touch each other? There's only one, one answer to that. You both have to die. But, you know, it takes her a minute, but a minute too long, clearly. So, um, she's upset that Peter left her in the water went in, when, it went, went, when the water went into her lungs. She feels betrayed because it isn't what they agreed. My notes next time, if I wake up early and try to do one of these, are going to be literally like three sentences because I clearly cannot read. Peter is back with his mother again. He's annoyed that he's always ends up here and it's still and it's still like hell. He says he didn't know what was happening to him when he was a kid at the hands of his father. Peter stands... Um, stands by and says he's innocent he didn't know any better and his mother tried to justify it peter asks his mother why didn't she stop his father so we obviously see or hear that peter was abused as a child and that's why he's such a effed up child effed up person now so miles slash peter takes hannah out for a walk into the state and asks her to look down into the well hannah is suddenly spooked but tells her that he's gotten so sick of watching her strutting around the place and asks her to look down the well. She looks down the well and sees her dead self. Hannah then returns to the job interview with Owen. She explains how Miles is gone and Flora might be too and that she cannot do anything about it because she is D-E-A-D, -E dead, 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 dead. Rebecca told Flora to, uh, to pretend she's part of Peter's plan as, cl as, clearly, as clearly as it seems like when she, when Rebecca went into Flora, she wanted it to seem like there was nothing wrong. But I don't think she went into Flora. I think obviously she didn't go into Flora. She acted like she went into Flora, just disappeared. And Peter thought that it was her. She tells Danny that it's too late for Miles, but she needs to get Flora away f as far as possible. Flora and Danny run outside, but Flora doesn't want to leave. Suddenly a faceless woman grabs Danny by the neck and drags her, drags her. So, um, 
I don't think Danny is going to die in this episode. I was saying the last episode that I think Danny was going to die, but I think Danny will die altogether. But I don't think she's going to die in this episode because we have one more episode to go. I think that somehow, I think the gardener and Owen are going to be a big part in this episode because we really truly don't know how they died. And we just need to close that chapter before we actually, actually, we might get Danny and this ghost at like the very end of this episode because I feel like we're going to get more Owen and the gardener and figure out why they died. I am so good at this. So let's just jump into this episode and find out what haunting a Bly Manor has got to give. And hopefully I won't fall asleep because I am so tired. Bloop! No! Oh, go. No! oh, I hope she doesn't die. Toward the middle of the 17th century, there lived in the province of Hampshire a widowed gentleman. His name is of little count, I shall take the liberty of calling him Mr. Willoughby. Two daughters, born at an interval of five years apart. The elder, Viola, the younger, Perdita, in memory of a little girl born between them, who had lived but a few weeks. That's sad. Women in that time had nothing. No present, no future, without a tie to a man. So they were as little girls once more. Several devoted swains and some two or three who enjoyed the reputation of universal charmers. Viola knew them for what they were. Gluttons, opportunists, vultures, and the sisters must stay in control, lest everything be lost to the same grave. They're very close sisters. To a distant cousin, one Mr. Arthur Lloyd. And just as Perdita began to feel the stirrings of a true interest in the young man, Viola explained she was late because of a dispute over uncollected rents. The wedding was a small affair, fit in the business arrangement that it was. She married her cousin? I, Viola, take thee, Arthur, to be my lawfully wedded husband. And obey. To love, cherish, and obey. She's like, about that. You're so cute. And a surprise not to God, thought Perdita, as her sister's strategic union was blessed. So she married her cousin. Great. That's why she's fucked up. He must be like the fifth or sixth cousin. I'm clearly not over him being the cousin. She would wake. She's a faceless woman. She would walk. Perhaps it wasn't the room after all. No, perhaps it was something else. Bly belongs to you, and they will try to take it from you as they did me. It is you. It is me. It is us. It is us. Ooh! Just went back to the 1700s. But nothing holds, and all things change given time. The time one realizes it has arrived, it has already set its teeth. Oh! Viola had an inordinate love of dress and the very best taste in the world. Heard a boast coming from her lips. <coughs> What's wrong? <laughs> well, that's the thing we saw in the beginning, episode one, I think. It is not the plague. Oh, thank God. She has the lung. You will treat her, cure her. I do not know that I can. You will. Oh. You will. God help you, but you will. <laughs> That'd be a horrible way to go out. No wonder why she's killing people. <laughs> and all things exhausted, the vicar came again to Bly. I go and prepare a place for you. No. What did you say? No, I do not go. Tell your God, I do not go. God wants her soul to be pure. He welcomes her heart. God should know better. She says she will not go, she will not. Just, I love these two sisters. Auntie, we need music, do we not? We need sleep. I never see you dance. She has you there, Purdy. One, two, three, one, two. I want to dance like this. I always liked it. She saw you dance. I apologize. No need. I can dance with him, you know. I know. I don't need you to take that on. That or anything else. I would never. So this song was started in the 1700s? The Lady of Bly Manor. I have no ambition. Lie. Viola. Lie. Think of Isabel. What will she be left with? What memories of you will she carry? 
She summoned to her room all of the jewels and clothes she had accumulated in her days before the sickness. They will be a great inheritance for our daughter. So you will keep them, watch them for her till she grows into them. Oh, well, this is a sad episode. You will keep the key and you will never give it to anyone except our child. Promise me, Ned. <laughs> Game of Thrones. And now the word crept down her shoulder and her elbow until the word came to live in her hand. She killed her sister. The word was not mercy, she realized in the end. No, the word had always been enough. You created this monster. That's the key that Hannah had. For in Perdita's eyes, he felt an echo of Viola's. And the echo growing louder. Mm, mm, mm. That was Viola that we've seen. During the first three years of their marriage, the new Mrs. Lloyd failed to become a mother in her own right. And her adopted daughter refused at every turn to see her as a mother. Oh girl, she coming for you. She had long since ascertained that her sister's immense wardrobe had been sequestered for the benefit of her daughter. Perdita had reached her limit. If she could have foreseen how dire things would become, how dire you have made things, and we would let it fall to ruin before she comes of age. Once and for all, Perdita, it is out of the question. Glad to learn the value at which I'm held. To feel oneself sacrificed to a caprice. Mm, I don't know what that means, but that's probably bad. Girl! This is gonna come and choke you out. How much you wanna bet? Yep, she's gonna come out of nowhere and get you, and you deserve it. Girl, you were so close to your sister. How could you just turn on her? I was rooting for you! We were all rooting for you! How dare you! No loyalty. She's gonna be in this thing, or she's gonna be, she, the sister's gonna come. She was letting you sleep with her man, and you still just keep pushing the buttons. Your sister's gonna come. Padetot? She dead. She really gave it to her sister. <sighs> oh, and the sister was the one at the attic with no face. She would wake. She would walk. And that's what Danny does. And in time, as we all do, she admitted all. An ocean of time. The moment finally came. She hated that sister. You had all right to do it. She buried Lady Perdita and set about forging a new life. At last, at least, she'd be with them both. A reward for all these years of isolation. For all the ache in her tired heart. Are they gonna throw it in the lake? Viola would not go. And once again, she would sleep. She would wake. And she would walk. And she'd stare at that empty bed. And Viola would remember. And the remembering itself was injury anew. Mm, that's so sad. Thus, she would sleep and she would forget. Having forgotten, she would wake. She did not even realize that a decade had passed. Where is she? You mustn't be in this wing without protection. Where? Invented gravity that held her to the grounds, that kept her in purgatory. It would hold others too. Well, your daughter's dead now. She never, you never saw her in heavenish. The past recedes, memories fade, and so true does the spirit. As her memories left her, so too her face, hoping to find a child. And here was a child. It must be the child whom she'd sought. Oh, she killed a child too. 
those unfortunates trapped in the gravity well she had made of Bly Manor. They were fading as well. A fate that befell Viola's once sister, now this forgotten sister. in the attic, unaware that she'd ever had a sister at all. A fate that befell a poor valet so many years later. No hope for anyone Jesus. with a sad misfortune to die on the grounds of Bly. And no hope, it would seem, for the young au pair. Oh, girl, I don't think you can get out that grip. Oh, we still don't know what happened to her. She's dead, because there's only one more episode after this. So she's dead, dead. That was a really good backstory. That was crazy. Ooh, sleep, wake, walk. SWW. Anyways, that was a really good episode. We got a backstory of the lady with no face. We got the backstory of everybody with no face. Um, and now we know with time, everybody forgets who they are. And just like that, their face is forgotten. That's really scary and really sad. And I'm going to have anxiety. Um, but this is a really good episode. I am really... We didn't get any um, Owen or Hannah. I mean, not uh, Hannah, Owen, or the guard, Jamie, I think her name is. Yeah, Jamie. We didn't have any backstory of them and how they died. I guess they're going to maybe tie that up all next episode. Who knows? But Danny is dead. That's so sad. Like I said, everybody is dead in this, um, this show. But I cannot wait for the final episode. This I've been watching this for like a month, so we need to wrap it up. Well, guys, that was my reaction to this wonderful, splendid episode. Please like, share, and subscribe if you're not subscribed. And the subscribe button is either here, 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 or over here. And I will see you all next time on Andres Arre.